it's five o'clock somewhere, let's play Minesweeper. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how you can play Minesweeper in Power Apps. And so what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you how to grab the code. So we're just gonna copy some code, paste it in, and learn how that functionality in Power Apps works. Then we're going to break down the code. So I'm gonna show you like, hey, when I got dropped into this app after I got on playing for a few minutes, like how do I figure out what it does? What if I wanna change things? What if I wanna replicate that functionality? And so we wanna look through the code a little bit and talk about how I explore the new code. We'll also talk a little bit about the power of community and how this is the cool stuff that happens. So if you wanna learn about Minesweeper in Power Apps, because of course you do, then let's jump over to my desktop and take a look. So here we are in Power Apps. Let's play Minesweeper and see how I do. I have no promises here. I blew up on the first try. It was not planned. All right, one more try, right? With a new button here. Yes. Let's try this corner. All right, that's safe. That's safe. That's safe. All right. Look, now we can switch it over here. We'll put a mine right here. Then we know that this one is free. Then we know that this one, this one. Oh, look at that. We opened the board up pretty good there. So we know there's a mine. We know there's a mine. We know that is good. We know that is good. Oh, we know that one's a mine. That's a mine. That's a mine. All right, back to the ones. Let's see here. Uh oh. All right, now I'm gonna have to start guessing. Oh, nope, that one's free. And that means that's a mine. And so then that means that one's free, that one's free, that one's free, that one's free. Oh, then that has to be a mine. So he's got three mines. Oh, this is where we just have to guess. This is always the worst part of Minesweeper. Let's just guess that this is a free one. Oh, we got it, all right. So we know that's a mine. We know that that one's free. Yes, we did it. All right, so there you go. That was a little crazy, but there is how we play Minesweeper in Power Apps, all right? It's got a high scoreboard over here, so you can keep up with your scores. If we hit this, we can start over. And so how does all this work? So the way that this works is, I just went and grabbed the code, okay? So a guy named Steve from France reached out to me and said, hey, I built this app, check it out. And I was like, all right, I kind of like Minesweeper. I used to play it a lot back in the 90s. I don't want to talk about that, but did you actually know that Minesweeper was invented in like 1992 in order to help people be better at left-clicking and right-clicking mouse? Yeah, yeah, it actually had a purpose way back in the day. Same with Solitaire. But anyway, so how did we get this app, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over here to Steve's profile on Power Apps Tools. Uh, PowerAppsTools.com, I've never been here before, but it's got all types of code snippets for Power Apps and SharePoint and XRM and YAML and stuff. So definitely check out and explore here, right? Just a community source of things. But out here on Steve's page, you can see that he's got three snippets, a multi, multiple pop-in screen, upload file with drag. All right, kind of back to the solitaire skills. Whoop, 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 whoop. And then Minesweeper. So if you click in here, this will take you to an overview, right, of what it is. And then there's a bunch of details here. And it just basically says, hey, copy my code. Now, if you're not familiar, over in Power Apps today, right, we now have, it went to GA just a few weeks ago, the ability to paste code. So not just copy, and, uh, you know, things around with our clipboard or notepad, right, but we can paste in YAML. And then as long as it's valid Power Apps YAML, we can use it. So Steve took advantage of that and made all of that available up here. So if we click on copy our snippet, right, that copies it to my clipboard. So now if we jump over here to Power Apps, right, we're gonna start at the very beginning. So we're gonna create, we'll say start with a blank canvas, tablet size. Okay, now you're on a blank canvas. It didn't have to be a blank canvas, but in our case, we want it to be one. All we're gonna do is go right here, we're gonna right click. Instead of just paste, we can say paste code. When we do a paste code, it is going to copy in every piece of element or everything that he had and now we have the app. Now, when I first looked at it, I was like, uh-oh, it didn't work. But if you hit play, as soon as you hit play, everything initializes and we're off to the races and then we could play, right? We're not gonna not make you watch me play again. So the way this works, let's open up Notepad real quick. So here in Notepad, if I right click and just paste, so what he gave us, what his lovely little copy button did, let's go to the top, is it had every piece of code in there, right? So the containers, the children, image backgrounds, you know, all the properties for all the different controls that got put in, everything that makes up that game that you just saw is in here. And it works just the same. Like if you were in here, let's just go here to a new screen real quick. New screen, blank. Like if I insert a button, right? Just a regular old button. I say on select set var dog equals buddy. If we right click on that, we can say view code. And so that created button one. It's a control. It's a classic button properties. Boom, 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 boom all of the pieces of the puzzle are there. 
And so if I was to then copy this code and take it with me, so down here, we'll click on copy code. So now like if we go to a new screen or even a new app, let's go to new screen, new screen, boom. And so if I paste, I don't want to just do a regular paste, I would paste code. And we do that, there is my button all configured with all the same things, right? So that's all Steve did. He just did it on a larger scale because obviously over here, he's got this, let's get rid of, let's just delete these guys so they don't confuse us. Delete, delete. But so here, right, like he's just got all these containers and groupings and all the pieces, right? But basically when he was ready to give this to us, he went right here, right clicked on it and said copy and copy code. And that's how he got the code that he gave us that then let the app work for us. Kind of cool, right? But there's also, there's nothing different about it. He didn't build it a special way to be copy code or anything like that. This will work for any of your controls today. Also, like I can adjust it. So for example, if we hit, um, hold on the alt key, press the rookie button. So the buttons say yes and no. But if we didn't like that, you know, if we want to change that, I can just go here and be like, okay, right? that makes no sense. But you get the idea, like it's just a power app. I can change whatever I want. I did catch like his last uh, score. When you save a last score, here, let's just do a blow up real quick. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, of course I can, there you go. So I don't even get a score when I blow up, that's rude. But when I get a score over here, like I saw that the last character, right? I see how the last characters are chopped off here. So I just went in and found the control and made it a little wider and then it would be back and working, right? Because it's just a power app. Speaking of this just being a power app, how, all right, so like how do I know what to do, right? This happens to us a lot. We get dropped into people's apps that we've never seen before. You know, we're like, eh, where, where, what should I do? So the first thing I always do when I get dropped in a new app is I always go to app and I go here and check the on start, right? Now in this case, there's not anything there because Steve's paste code didn't, can't update on start. So we're not gonna have anything there, but that'd be the first place I'd check. The second place, screen one, I would also go here and check things like on visible. Once again, not gonna be there because we didn't copy or paste in Steve's screen. So we wouldn't have code there, but I want you to make sure that you're always checking those when you're writing in new apps. So then now I'm like, all right, well, so what's all this doing? So for example, if I wanna figure out what this is, I'm gonna click and so we can see over here, all right, well, so that's a gallery. So what's the items for the gallery? Oh, so he's just using a sequence for bar number of rows or number of columns, sorry, I can't read. And so what is var number of columns right now? It's nine, so that's nine. And if we counted, that is currently nine. So he's just passing a variable to a sequence. So he's making a gallery with nine um, items, right? And so then if we look inside gallery game rows, oh, gallery game lines, so that's the vertical. And so here he is showing, he's filtering a collection called Cole Square Data where the column equals the value. So that's how it knows to show, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nines data. So then you're like, well, okay, well, what about things like the size? So we could look here and be like, all right, well, how tall are you? Because obviously you can be dynamic. So if we go and look at its template size, which would be the height, look, it is self height divided by the number of rows. So if it's, you know, 900, it's a, the gallery was 900 tall, there's nine rows, right? Each row would be 100 pixels tall. Obviously that's not actually the number, but you get the idea. Like the, the math is happening to make that dynamic because when we're on rookie, it's a nine by nine, but if we switch this, hold down the alt key, press expert, okay, right? It is a much, much bigger pattern. And so we needed all that to be dynamic. And so the math is what's driving all of that. Right, and a great use of sequence. If you know anything about me, you know that I love sequence, right? So this looks like it's a 20 by, I forget what the other one is. Now, if you're like, okay, well, so where did bar number of columns get set? I don't know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go here. I'm gonna say copy. Now, if I search right here, I'm not gonna find it because bar number of columns is not a control name. It is a name of a variable, right? So we can't use that search to find it. Boo, yeah, not boo. All right, click on this search. This search is across everything. So if we put in var number of columns here, we can then see that, okay, you, it's a context variable on screen one, okay? And then if we look 
it looks like that inside the button pop-up confirmation on select, number of columns gets set. So we can then go in here and be like, all right, well, so it looks like he's got a button for when, you know, a uh, VAR confirmation, VAR pop-in confirmation. That's hard for me to say. Case, so if you chose rookie, he sets the number of lines to nine, columns to nine, number of mines to 10, level rookie. All right, competent is 13 by 13 with 50 mines. Whoa, 20 by 20 is 100 expert, right? Aren't you glad I didn't make you watch me play that? That took a long time. So this is where he's setting those. And then it looks like he also then runs some type of select button initialization. And so we would just do the same type of thing to go find that, see what that code is doing. And he's got some pop-up updates here. Now, what that makes me think is that I bet you when I click on Rookie Extraordinaire, so we got to close our little search thing. Let's go back to our screen. So here, yep, on select. Hey, I realize that Minesweaver has actually nothing to do with my training classes, but if you go to training.powerapps911.com, I got lots of training classes you can sign up for. On-demand classes, live classes, a six-month university program. You can get mentoring and help, all types of stuff. So go check. So that button is setting the message, okay? And then it is setting a variable confirmation shows true and confirmation cases rookie. So that's how when I press this button, boop, it's making this whole thing show up. And like, look, there's that message. And then we knew that inside these buttons, um, we have all those different things going on, right? And so it looks like clicking this button triggers that other button. So he's kind of got things stacked on top of each other, but we can follow the clues, the puzzle, right? The beauty of Power Apps is there's no compiled code. There's no hidden secrets. Like, I'm not worried about, like, one thing you might think is, well, Shane, should you really paste it in code you got from the internet? Yes, I mean, you should you should be skeptical, but not in this case, because when we paste it into Power Apps, like, this Power App can't do anything, like, hidden, right? There's no compiled DLLs in there that I'm worried about things happening. Now, if you want to be super thorough, you could have went through this notepad and, you know, looked in here, like, hey, is he doing any type of external calls or anything, but even if you did those and you would have had to authorize the connection. So yes, you can double check his code. It's all in plain English here. You're like, well, no, Shane, that's not plain English. Well, it's French. No, it's not French either, right? That's just the base 64 for some of the images that he's using. So, but you could definitely go through this, you know, trust but verify, that's fine. But no, at the end of the day, I do not feel worried at all because this app, can't do anything says so power appy stuff. We know power apps can't really do bad things, right? It's not installing executables, DLLs. It's not talking to other websites. So I feel good that uh, Steve did not send us down the wrong path, but you should always check any code before you use it. That That is fair. Okay. Now other cool things in here. So I was just say, okay. Oh, all right. We're back to rookie. Um, so then like if we go in here, so we were talking about this before. So we talked about like the size, so we can see that inside the gallery uh, lines, you know, we've got a label. We've got, this one is what puts a flag on the square or not. And so you can see that the, this base 64, these are the different um, things to show, right? So like if we wanted to see what this one was, I could just copy this, copy. And then I would once again, just jump to a new screen so I don't mess up his beautiful work. Throw myself an image control on here. Right, because Power Apps understands base 64, obviously. And then just set the image to be that. And so you can see that that is the image that he created. So he created the whole button effect and the little mind symbol all as one picture. And so then he's using it. Now, I will also commend Steve, right? Like, notice that that is not a lot of code, right? He made a very, very tiny little um, image. So the base 64 is super small. If he had made a real high resolution, shiny, awesome picture, which would have looked really pretty, but it would have made, you know, much bigger base 64, which would have slowed everything down. So kudos to Steve there for choosing to use really small images. Okay. So that's what he did there. So let's go back over here. So we're looking at this. Um, Oh, I didn't mean to actually play it. I want to go back in here. So that looks like, so he's got one image control for showing a flag or not a flag. And then when they click on it, right, we've got another one for showing the explosion or not. Um, and then the number, which is what in this case is showing our one. 
So, you know, and, and as we get down the rabbit hole further, like it's a little bit more complicated. You'd have to kind of go figure out. So like, when's he triggering? I'm guessing if we look here, uh, let's see, where do we think the on select is? Oh, let's try right here. Yep, okay, there you go. So on select to that label that stretched over the whole thing, then he's selecting image flag case. So, and so then for this image control on select, so then this is where he's controlling his timer. He's looking to see, did they win the game? Is it over? So do we need to make the bomb explode or not? And so he's doing all the facilitating of the game. Like we're not gonna get into the game's logic because that's super interesting. You should go look at it, but that's not important for the video today. It's a nice little look at, right? There's a lot going on here. It's very complicated. Right? There's a bunch of little intricacies, but once again, everything is there. If you're like, hey, how did he make the whole, um, you know, how does he make the array of whether or not these things have bombs or not, right? Like, so like, I know that when he presses this button, we know that this uh, just made the pop-up appear. So we'll make the pop-up appear. We know when you press the OK button, it runs button pop, uh, button pop, pop in. Oh, so hard to say. It runs that thing, right? Like you think English wasn't my first language, though some people argue it's not. All right, but so we can go find that one. So we go to that button on select that. We already looked at that code before, but then remember it ran this. And so if we copy that, we'll go check that one. And so then on select this one, it turns out is where you'll start to see, um, you know, the different things. So it's basically doing all the math to determine uh, the game board, right? The squared data and he's looping through that to create them. And then down here, this is where he's doing the random calls to put the mines in different places every time. So people like me don't memorize how to do good at the game. Um, and then he needs to calculate the number of adjacent mines so then it knows whether or not to show things. Um, you know, all of this, right? So once again, I'm not gonna go through this logic. I mean, obviously it works. You saw me play the game. And if you wanted to do it, please jump in there, but we're not gonna try to teach that. Okay, so the other thing I wanna make sure we talk about with this, right? Like the power community, you know, Steve built this on his own time and made this available, right? So Steve's out here. He was supposed to be updating his info. I guess his profile info didn't update, but go connect with Steve on LinkedIn, right? Jump in there and then check out these other codes, other things like the pop-up that you're seeing is part of this thing that Steve had already built before. But there are tons of different controls and galleries and examples out on the internet that you can pull in to, you know, kind of look at this type of stuff and, and get ideas, you know, whether it's just completely, maybe you just go steal his upload file with drag. Whereas with Minesweeper, you maybe just, Goof off all day. No, not goof off. Do research all day. Um, but there's a lot of different advantages out there. And then if you've built something cool, get it published, right? Whether it's in this Power Apps tools, the uh, PCF gallery one that's out there. Uh, Microsoft has a community gallery as well. There are all types of places to get your information out there. And then post it on LinkedIn, Reddit, uh, Twitter, the Microsoft forms. I guess it's called X or Blue Sky, whatever you want, right? But Get it out there, start to meet people, right? Like, I mean, think about Steve. He built this thing, put it out here and tagged me on LinkedIn. And next thing you know, he's got a whole YouTube video made about him. You just never know where it's gonna go. Um, Ryan on my team now, right? He's been with us, I don't know, for a year-ish now. I, like Ryan presented on the Microsoft community call that happens every month. And I was like, hey, Ryan, why don't you come hang out with us a little bit, right? And that was, you know, people get jobs from that type of stuff. There's a lot of advantages to engaging with the community. What do you got? Ideas, thoughts, comments? Engage with the community below this video. Always a good way. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.